Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another Brawl deck, and since today's FNM event features Historic Brawl, I wanted to take the opportunity to explore one of the Historic Brawl commanders, which is going to be Isamaru Hound of Konda, introduced in Jumpstart, a 1 mana 2 2 legendary dog with no other text, so just always gives us access to that 1 drop on curve, which is nice for a more aggressive deck, which is what this is. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, of course, we're also going to play Mox Amber, which is great with any 1 mana commander gives us a nice mana boost to start with, can maybe play two one drops on the first turn, and then some of our one drop creatures include the Alcid of Life's Bounty, Dauntless Bodyguard, nice protective creatures, Fairy Guide Mother can maybe jump one of our creatures later in the game to help us close or take out a Planeswalker, Giant Killer can also be used as removal later in the game, Healer's Hawk has a nice 1-1 one -one flyer with a lifelink, Legion's Landing is also pretty easy to transform when we have this many cheap creatures and always access to a one drop, Leonin Vanguard can also turn into a 2-2 creature that gains one life each turn, Loyal Pegasus can attack for two in the air, and then Selfless Savior kind of joins Dauntless Bodyguard and Alcide of Life's Bounty as a nice protective one drop, and then a Sky Marcher Aspirant can also be a 2-1 flyer, and finally Mikaeus the Lunark, not really a one drop, but we can also still search it up with our Ranger of Eos, which is also in the deck, so that's a nice late game creature to still be able to tutor up with our Ranger. And then at 2 mana we've got both Adanto Vanguard as well as Seasoned Hallow Blade as 3-1 attackers that can become indestructible. We've got Eidolon of Obstruction to make opposing Planeswalkers more expensive to activate. Glorybound Initiate can also attack as a 4-4 lifelink. Hushbringer can shut down Enter the Battlefield effects and we don't have a ton of creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities ourselves. Then we've got Pack Leader to synergize with Isamaru and it's also just a reasonable 2-drop by itself. Raise the Alarm to make two tokens to synergize with our various Anthem effects. Sun Home Stalwart can mentor onto our smaller creatures, and Tithe Taker is also great against any blue decks playing lots of instants, and Tomic another efficient flyer at two mana. And then we also have Arcane Signet, despite having a low curve it's still a valuable card to have access to, especially when we can play so many of our one drops after playing the Signet. And then Tome of Legends is also perfect in a deck with a 1 mana commander. Then at 3 mana we've got Kinjali Sunwing, which makes blocking very difficult as all the opposing creatures will come into play tapped. Prison Realm as a nice removal spell. We've got Unbreakable Formation as another anthem effect that also makes our creatures indestructible. Basri and Gideon Blackblade as 3 mana planeswalkers that are great in a more aggressive deck. We've got the classic Glorious Anthem. Taranika can also turn one of our smaller creatures into a 4 4 that's indestructible. Banalish Marshal, another Anthem effect, and Heraldic Banner also pumps the team while generating mana. And then at 4 mana we've got Conclave Tribunal, which isn't really a 4 drop since we can use it with Convoke. And the Ranger of Eos to get the various 1 drops, including Mikaeus, and maybe we can get a Giant Killer, which is still quite powerful in the late game if it can take out a bigger creature. And finally we've got Elspeth Sun's Nemesis, which can make more tokens or pump the team. And since we're not using the Graveyard otherwise, it's nice to have at least one Escape card in the deck. And then we also have a Venerated Loxodon, which can also convoke and put counters on our creatures. And then the mana base, pretty simple, only 22 lanes, but we still have a few additional mana sources with Heraldic Banner, Signet and Mox Amber, Castle Ardenvale, and a Shafat Dunes, which can also be used to pump up our team to maybe help us close out the game. We could potentially get away with one or two colorless lands, but we also have cards like Banalish Marshal, Tomic, and plenty of one drops that require white mana, so I would rather not risk it. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. Yeah, the sand seems okay. Could use a third land for Gideon, and so we can sink more mana into Tome of Legends. For now, probably okay to just play Samaru. And then turn two, can go double one drop or maybe play the Initiates. I think I'm gonna go with double one drop here. That way if we do draw an Anthem effect next turn it's a little bit more effective, as we have more creatures in play. And then a single removal spell from the opponent would also be a little bit less effective. Next turn we can play Gideon, so that lines up well against any 4 mana sweeper the opponent might have. Well, there's Glorious Anthem. But I think I still want to try and resolve Gideon. So I'm gonna start by attacking 
See if they have a response. So this now puts me in a bit of an awkward spot where I would like to play something, but it's probably getting countered. Yeah, I mean, I could just play Glorybound Initiate, and then if they do play for Mana Sweeper, I just use a Savior to protect it if they let it resolve, and if it gets countered, I'm pretty happy. Alright, opponent lets it resolve, so I expect a 4 mana sweeper next turn. But then if they do play their sweeper, I get to keep the initiate and resolve maybe a Gideon. This could have been a good turn for Tome of Legends as well, but I didn't really want this getting countered. Alright, they have a tap land instead. And our opponent does nothing. Alright, well, now I guess I don't mind my tome getting countered as much. Could also try for a glorious anthem. Of course, the best card to resolve would be Gideon, since that protects us the best from a potential sweeper, but uh, it's pretty easy for them to counter it. Next turn they can also potentially play Teferi, plus and still have two mana interaction, so I do want to present a little bit of pressure here. So yeah, let's play the Tome of Legends, and maybe this baits out a response. If not, we get to draw some cards. Alright, Dovin's Veto to counter it, that's fine. I don't think I need to play Giant Killer. So we'll see if they want to play Teferi or if they have other plans. Realm Cloak Giant to wipe the board, no Giants in play. We'll protect Initiates. Put Isamaro back in the command zone. And then this is our window to resolve Gideon. And we can even give Vigilance and then uh, exert the initiate without actually tapping it, so that's pretty neat. And then I guess now it's fine to play Giant Killer. Of course, it could take out a Realm Cloak Giant eventually, but at 7 mana. I think I would rather just play the extra creature out. So we've got a decent amount of pressure still. Points at 6. Gotta hope they can stabilize here. Banishing Lights, a good answer for Gideon. I surrender. Alright, well, it's Glorious Anthem time. And we'll smash. And then is there any point in exerting the Glory Bound Initiate here? Alright, our opponent packs it in. Sweet, so we managed to beat Blue White Control with the Fairy. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Nicol Bolas, the Ravager. So if they have lots of cheap removal, we could be in trouble. What do I think of this hand? It's not amazing. Lots of 1-drops, but no real interaction. No ramp or anthem effects, unless you count the pump from Elspeth, which is probably going to end up getting discarded to Nicol Bolas, since we only have the two lands. I think I can take my free mulligan here. This hand is kind of slow. But it does have a nice tool with Hushbringer, which shuts down the ETB effect from Nicol Bolas. And we can potentially play a longer game with these powerful 3 and 4 drops. So I'll try it. We'll have to draw the third land, of course. But this is where having the 1-drop commander comes in handy, since we didn't have a 1-drop otherwise. There's a third land. Now a Grixis deck. It's probably going to pack quite a few sweepers, but that's where Unbreakable Formation could also come in handy, and some Planeswalkers can also give us some more protection. Alright, so for now I think I prefer Taranika over Banalish Marshall. Playing Marshall is better when we have more creatures in play that we can impact right away with the plus one plus one effect. Alright. 
Terranica also dies. So yeah, this is the matchup we want to avoid. An opponent with lots of cheap removal. But we do get to play Elspeth here, make some tokens, so that's nice. And then next turn, Banalish Marshal or Unbreakable Formation could be quite useful. It's gonna be a Gonti, which we do shut down with a Hushbringer. Alright, so what's the play? I can minus one on my tokens. I could just make more tokens. Or we can just keep up formation, although if the sweepers languish or extinction event, then formation doesn't really matter. So definitely a tricky spot. I think I do need to get more bodies out there. So yeah, let's uh, play Banalish Marshal. And then... Yeah, I think I do pump the tokens to get them past Gonti. And then just hope they don't have a sweeper here. Anthro God Eternals gains four, makes a four four blocker. It's pretty rough too. Probably better off just playing Isamaru and Pack Leader and then making more tokens to set up for next turn. And then we're not too far from escaping Elspeth. Pack Leader down. And Discovery. Yeah, so far our opponent has basically only played removal spells. I guess Gonti, 2-3 blocker with Death Touch. Tomb of Legends is nice. Get to make a good attack and put a counter on the tomb. Alright, they're down to seven. Can they find a sweeper effect here? Midnight Clock into Nickel Bolas, which doesn't trigger because of Hushbringer, but we were empty handed anyway. They've got two blockers, so block, block. They're just dead on board here. Plus, we can also escape Elspeth for what it's worth. GG's. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Galta, Primal Hunger. This could definitely be a rough matchup, like a green Stompy deck whose creatures are larger than ours that can also get to the board quickly. We do have Ranger of Eos, which can search up Giant Killer, which is a decent answer to Galta. So, I think I'm okay keeping this. Turn one Adventurous Impulse. Alright, so we'll play the Hallow Blade. And then we've got four mana for Ranger in hand already. Horn Beetle. I'm still okay to attack into. Yeah, that seems fine. Opponent takes five. Get to play some evasive one drops. And we're pretty close to the city's blessing for Aspirant as well. Opponent passes with three mana up. A little suspicious. Not sure what that can represent. So if I play land and ranger, I still won't have the city's blessing. I'm gonna be one short. Let's move to combats. I think I'm okay attacking with all again. 
opponent takes it. Well, there's no real sweepers in green, so... Play Ranger, get Giant Killer and Mikaeus, I think. Could also get uh, Guide Mother. But I like Mikaeus for the late game, and then Giant Killer as removal. And pass. Blanchwood Armor. It's not gonna work out great against a revealed Giant Killer. Unless they maybe have the one mana hexproof trick. So let's see, can I guaranteed kill them through a hexproof trick? I guess with Shafat Junes I can, right? They block. Take five, six, seven, eight. Sure. Otherwise, I could have tried playing Conclave Tribunal while leaving up 3 mana for the Adventure on Giant Killer. So if they did have the Hexproof trick in response to Tribunal, I could still respond with Giant Killer to get rid of the Horn Beetle. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Chromium, the Mutable deck. So Asper Control, essentially. This hand's okay. We've got Glorious Anthem, which kind of protects us from sweepers a little bit. And then Conclave Tribunal's uh, decent removal spell, so I'll keep. And of course, Tithe Taker great against counter spells. Ooh, Tome of Legends. I think we'll wait on that, but definitely a nice one to have. Tome of Legends can definitely be a reason to sometimes play a different one drop than Isamaru on turn one. If you've got it. But playing Isamaru gives the opponent less information. Opponent does take Glorious Anthem. Yeah, seems like a good time for Tome of Legends. Start putting some counters on it. And then, uh, probably still fine to play Aspirant. Still no white mana for our opponents. Lazav is a decent blocker here. Let's draw with Tome first. We can get pretty close to the city's blessing, but not quite enough this turn. I think I want to hold the Conclave Tribunal for one more turn. Just play Atomic. Can attack with Isamaru for free to put a counter on Tome. And then next turn the Aspirant is also going to gain flying. And hopefully there's no Sweeper here. Opponent passes with 4 mana up. A little suspicious, but City's Blessing has been achieved, and I'm gonna just move to combat here, I think. Tithe Taker does make any instant from the opponent one more expensive. Then we'll draw. And it's probably fine to convoke Loxodon. Could have also convoked Loxodon by tapping Isamaru so it can get past Lazav. But I also just wanted to get the extra counter on Tome right away. They didn't counter Loxodon. Lazav attacks, doesn't attack. Ooh, Massacre Girl. Well, that's even better than Sweeper here. Even gets rid of the Spirit Token from my Tithe Taker afterwards. So that was pretty painful. Point still at 15. 
Alright, Hollow Blade also would have died to Massacre Girl. I guess we'll uh, play both of them out here. Do get an extra counter on Tome at least. And maybe next turn we'll get rid of Massacre Girl so we can keep attacking. Opponent passes. Elspeth, also decent. So I can go Elspeth plus Tribunal maybe. Could potentially play around a conditional counter spell. I think I'm okay just convoking with the uh, two tokens. Resolves. And then we'll attack. Still keeping the planes in hand in case we need to make the Hollow Blade indestructible. Yeah, I don't think I need to play the land out. Would let me activate Tome of Legends. But it doesn't seem a priority right now. Opponent is now down to 10, and Elspeth is doing a good job of pressuring them. And then we also have a Shafet Junes we can't forget about. So our deck is putting up a fight. Still no white mana. It's gonna be Giruda for 6. All right, let's see what they hit. Stalwart from my graveyard, but they're probably going to get a Lockmere Serpent. Seems a bit better. Luckily, Agent of Treachery doesn't work since it's an odd mana cost. They could also go for Razaketh, but... Not sure which is better here between Serpent and Razaketh. Serpent, they can maybe more easily get back from the graveyard. Goes for Serpents. So they have two blockers. Uh, let's start by drawing with Tome. Alright, they have one blocker. And then... Wouldn't be able to use Desert and Giant Killer. But I can pump with Elspeth. We're getting very close to lethal, but I don't think we quite have enough this turn. So let's destroy probably just a serpent. And then Elspeth can pump two tokens. Sank with all. Get an extra counter on Tome. Take eight. And play Giant Killer. Still have a card in hand to discard to the Hollow Blade. And Elspeth can potentially make two more tokens. And now that they're at two life, Castle Ardenvale making one ones is also going to be pretty nice. I think I do jump with a giant killer here. It's much better if they do have a sweeper. That way we get to keep Elspeth to make two more one ones. And basically every one of our creatures is lethal once we pump it with the Shifan Dunes, so it's unlikely that our opponent can play three blockers. Well, I guess now they can gain four. And there's the white mana. And Lockmere Serpent gets returned to hand. So it's going to be tricky to escape Elspeth. Alright, so five cards in Graveyard. I guess we can start by drawing a card. I'm one mana short of using Formation and activating Shafet Dunes. So what's the play here? I guess just add a bunch of creatures to the board. Or 
courage will bloom in all who and then just escape Elspeth once again. And then just attack with a Hollow Blade, or I can attack with both and then put them to one essentially. Yeah, we'll attack with both. Alright, so our opponent's back to one. Still have a pretty nice board state. Unbreakable Formation in hand. Let's see if they can recover. Ooh, Unbreakable Bonds making a lifelinking Agent of Treachery, which can steal Elspeth and then make two more tokens. Alright, that's annoying. So they now have five blockers, and one of them has lifelink too. Kinjali's Sunwing would have been useful in play. Start by drawing. Let's play the Sunwing. No response. I think I'm just gonna activate my castle end of turn. And then I also get to keep up formation just in case. They do get to make two more tokens with Elspeth, but then she does go to the graveyard finally. And the tokens are tapped thanks to the Sunwing. Agent attacks. I'll just block with the Sunwing here, I think. There's no real reason to block, I guess I can just take two. In case they have like a minus two, minus two type effect. Play Serpent, but it's tapped. Yeah, we might be able to cross the finish line here. Alright, so I can activate Shafet Dunes and then still play Formation. Seems safe enough. Alright, our opponent concedes. Definitely a close game. Our opponent almost managed to crawl their way back, but the Sunwing in the end was also quite useful. And then, uh, yeah, the Tome of Legends definitely kept us in the game thanks to Isamaru being so cheap to play an attack with. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play facing Muldrotha, the Gravetide. So a Sultai Graveyard deck. This hand's okay. Turn 2 we can go Signet plus Aspirant, and then turn 3 we can maybe play Taranika. Our deck is definitely capable of punishing slower decks with a lot of tap lands. Alright, I could even Convoke a Loxodon here, play Eidolon and Convoke Loxodon. Although if they do have some 2 matter removal spell, that can potentially go poorly for me. I think I'm still gonna try it. They don't seem to have a response, so... I've got a nice amount of power and toughness in play. Prison Realm has removal, and we can still add a Taranika to the board. Reclamation Sage can kill Eidolon or Signet, kills Signet, which in this case I'm pretty happy with. Alright, so... Move to Combots. Aspirant is staying home for now. Eidolon does have First Strike, so they probably wanted to jump the Loxodon there. 
And now we gotta hope they don't have a languish or extinction events. It's just gonna be a rejuvenator. Bossery is a great draw too. Yeah, we can just play Bossery, use the minus two ability, making five one one tokens here. As we attack with all our creatures, Taranika turns the Aspirant or some other creature into a 4-4. Four four. I guess the Aspirant would also achieve the City's Blessing here, thanks to the tokens from Bossery. So that's also a neat synergy. So yeah, we were in a pretty dominant board state. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Kenrith, so a 5-color deck. Um, this hand is pretty soft to a sweeper effect, which is probably what a 5-color deck is going to be playing. A decent amount of, at least. I think we gotta take a mulligan here. Alright, still not a great hand, but I'll keep it. I've got a bit of removal, at least, to take out a key blocker or potentially a planeswalker. And we've got a reasonable curve, thanks to Isamaru being our 1-drop. And at least Tithe Taker leaves behind a 1-1 token if he dies. It's gonna be an Aegis Turtle. Interesting. Are they playing some sort of high alert deck with a lot of high toughness creatures or... Is there something else going on? Eliminates the Tithe Taker. Alright, I guess I'm okay playing Taranika here. Trophy takes out Taranika, we get an extra land. I guess we can sink that mana into Mikaeus at least. For now... Probably go with Sunwing plus Healer's Hawk. Yeah, I guess that's okay. If we need to use Prison Realm next turn, I might regret not playing Mikaeus earlier. Otherwise we get to play a bigger Mikaeus. Cast down the Sunwing. So plenty of cheap removal, and this turtle has also prevented a ton of damage. Hopefully they're out of answers for Mikaeus now. We can deal with Kenrith pretty efficiently. And then Mikaeus can start pumping the team. So we'll play Atomic before activating Mikaeus. Gets ionized. Sure. I would get in more damage this turn, probably by just attacking with Mikaeus, but I want to diversify in case they have more spot removal. And I'll keep the planes in hand in case they have a discard one effect. Like a Nicol Bolas, the Ravager, for instance. Archon of Sun's Grace, good target for the Prison Realm. And the Raise the Alarm, I guess, is okay. Synergizes with Mikaeus, but maybe I should be digging for more removal spells in case they play Kenrith here.
Yeah, this turtle has prevented a ton of damage so far. Let's see if they have a sweeper. They don't, and our opponent explodes. Were they dead on board, they could play Kenrith, have two blockers. Yeah, I guess they were dead on board to the flyers here. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Rada, Heart of Kelds. And yeah, I don't hate my hands. The indestructible from Vanguard and Bodyguard is gonna come in handy as we draw another indestructible creature. And then we even have removal for maybe a larger green creature. Opponent is playing Field of the Dead, so they are probably leaning pretty heavily into the whole Lands Matters theme from Rada. Probably want to start with Hallowblades over Vanguard, although it's kind of a close call. I guess I don't care about my life total as much as I do cards in hands at this point. So we'll play Vanguard first. Alzusa, alright. They could start making zombie tokens pretty soon. Also, they only had one extra land to play, so they're already out of lands in hand. I think I want to play a couple more creatures before playing Glorious Anthem. So for now... We'll just send both, and then I can play Hallow Blade plus probably the Sky Marcher here. I've got two creatures that can become indestructible in play already, so I'm not too concerned with the Sweeper. Could be an Hour of Promise getting two more lands. Nope, Elder Gargaroth, which we can answer with Giant Killer. So that's not an issue. If we didn't have a Giant Killer, we would have been in trouble. I'll leave the Aspirin back. Don't really want to trade for Azusa. And I'm fine discarding a card here. Opponent down to 13. It's gonna be Domri. Makes mana. And maybe they'll play Rada here. Only as first strike on offense, just a 4 3 on defense now. So playing Glorious Anthem seems fine. And then, do I even care about Domri? And the yeah, our opponent just explodes a little bit too far behind. So yeah, the power of the mono-white aggro deck with the Samaru cannot be underestimated. And we even beat some control decks with plenty of spot removal and sweeper effects. So it's not a one-trick pony that rolls over at the first sign of interaction. So I definitely recommend giving Isamaru Brawl a try while you can in the FNM event. Otherwise, you can always use external websites or Discord servers to find opponents to play Historic Brawl with. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.